you know, as I sometimes post about, it's more than just cooking now and it's building relationships and, you know, getting to know people and helping people. And I feel like that is something that I was truly missing when I was actually just the restaurant chef. Hey, I've got my friend Lauren Owens. If you are any participant on finding, you know, Fintwit, you're going to know her. She is Fintwit's resident chef. She's got an awesome story. And for those who don't know her, like this is the story of following her passions to create a better life, more fulfilling life. And I guess take us back to pre-Fintwit chef Lauren. Like what were you doing in the restaurant business and kind of what was the happiness of being a chef in that situation versus what led you to where you are today? So take us back to working in the restaurant business rather than being a entrepreneur chef. Okay, so working in the restaurant business is completely different than exactly what I'm doing now, but there still are a lot of little things that are the same, although tons of things that are completely different. So in the restaurant business, the hours were different. I was in charge of a whole crew. Um, I fed hundreds to thousands of people a day. And as opposed to what I do now, which is a lot more intimate uh, one-on-one basis and I don't have a crew. Although every now and again, depending on what I do, I might have someone that helps me out, but it's nothing like running a restaurant style kitchen or a restaurant kitchen um, with the whole crew underneath you. So that's that's a, one of the biggest differences um, aside from like just a little bit about the day-to-day every day. Now let's go back even way before that. So what led you to the restaurant business? Have you always been somebody who liked to cook and liked food or or how did you develop that passion? Because it's safe to say food is your passion knowing what you're doing today, but what what brought you to the restaurant business before we get to today? So I I have always loved to cook and I grew up in a cooking family. Um, My grandmother was an amazing cook and my parents, we always had dinner and I always helped and it was a chore uh, of the family to kind of help out with dinner. And then, you know, I noticed that like, I loved cooking for my friends or even cooking for my family or every little aspect part of my life as growing up, I always had to do with me cooking for somebody, whether it be baking a cookie or making some special potatoes or chicken wings or a salad. Um, but I didn't grow up thinking that I wanted to be a chef. I just grew up knowing that I loved food and loved cooking. And as I started to get older and things started happening, I was a, realized that my life was aligned to become a chef. I just, I didn't grow up saying, oh, I want to be one. I kind of wanted to be every other thing and then a chef because I just felt like a chef was something, something that, or cooking was just something that I loved to do. I didn't look at it as a career choice until high school when I realized that it was one. And when I was in high school, I had a cooking teacher and a cooking class that I excelled in and probably one of my only classes aside from Spanish that I did so great in. So um, a teacher that kind of took me under her wing and she's like, your notes are great. You really love this. Like we're having a career fair and um, or like a college fair rather. And I want you to look at some of these culinary colleges, culinary schools. And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, there's a school that you just go to for cooking. I had no idea that like I could mm-hmm. go to college and, or, and, and focus on food. And I'm like, well, I'm good at this. Like I can do that. And I wasn't so good academically. So it kind of like all, it was all aligned and it worked out. And I went to um, my county college, got my associate degree in culinary arts. And then that's kind of when I would say like when I started taking the classes and I had one class called Garmage, uh, the adjunct teacher ended up being um, a chef of mine. He ended up hiring me. And that was like the kind of the, one of the big starts in my career. And that's like when I was sitting in his class and I was hearing him talking about being a chef, that's kind of when it hit me that I knew that I was going to be one, or at least put everything I had into becoming one. You used a word twice that I love, alignment. The first time you said aligned, then you said alignment. At what point, was it sitting in class or was there another moment where that alignment became obvious to you that you knew our mutual friend, Tyrone Ross, he talks about destiny steps that you knew that your destiny steps were somewhere along this culinary path. Like what told you that everything was in alignment rather than this is just something that I enjoy doing. I would say the, the classroom. So like, as I'm sitting here with you today, I can look back and see all of those steps that are like, Holy goodness. Like this is really what I was meant to do. And there were times where I didn't realize that it was, and it, it probably took me 
sitting in the college classroom to realize that that's what I was meant to do like as a career partly because I didn't know that it was what career and it wasn't as popular as at all or known as it is now and also like I just didn't I just didn't put it all together. So I would say probably sitting in the Garmaj classroom at Middlesex County College uh, was when it hit me that that was what, what I was meant to do, like to become a professional chef, I would say. Uh, and I, This is going in a direction I had no idea we we're gonna go on, but you were talking about another thing. So you mentioned like looking back, you can see all these steps that were leading you in the direction, but in the moment, you didn't realize that those steps were taking you this way or that you, like, it's only in hindsight that you realized it. From your experience, and I, I agree that these things happen. I have a friend that talked about how energy compounds itself and that we're like our subconscious sometimes creates a reality and that we'll, we're, we have a good likelihood of getting where we want to go. It's just not going to happen on our time and it may not be our path. Looking back, is there anything that you could have done to have picked up on those signs sooner? And the reason I ask is hopefully there's somebody listening today that is, you know, they're pursuing, they just don't know where they're going quite yet. And maybe if there's a way that we can say, hey, like leave yourself open or be mindful of paying attention to little signs. And sometimes a little sign is much bigger than what we, what we might think it is. Is any advice you could give somebody when it comes to picking up those signs a little bit earlier to speed up their process? Hmm, that's a great question and direction. I would say a few things. I would say one thing is kind of, well, believing in yourself and then also like looking at the thing that kind of just comes so naturally to you. I feel like sometimes we make things a lot harder than they need to be as humans. Like cooking came naturally to me ever since I was young, like as young as I can remember, like just being able, like picking up something and being able to like hop on the counter and do stuff. So it, that always came so easy to me. And I was always kind of running after the things that came harder for me or that I wanted to do things that I'm not necessarily good at. Like, yeah, we can all, try to be better at the things that we're not good at. And I've also learned that a lot within my business uh, and then just like growing up more. But I would say cooking didn't even hit me as something that I could pursue because it was just like kind of there. And I didn't pay attention enough to see the signs until I did. And then I'm like, oh, this is the thing. But it wasn't in my brain. Like I grew up thinking that like, you know, I wanted to be an athlete. I wanted to be a lawyer. And I really loved like acting and dancing. All things that like, those are the three things that I'm, terrible at. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like focusing on that and that works for some people because like, yeah, like you could like practice and try and become things that you're not. And I'm not saying not to do that. Like don't stay away from the hard things. I'm not at all saying that, but like, I just completely disregarded my ability in the kitchen because it wasn't like what I thought that I should be. It didn't even occur to me. I don't know if I answered the question. <laughs> no, that's no, that's that's perfect. And I don't think there's a right answer to it um, because sometimes things are only meant to be visible and understood in hindsight. But I do think other times if we leave ourselves open to opportunities or connections or taking a coffee, like th those little things, like not being too dialed in that you miss out on these little signs that might pull you just a little bit different direction that gets you going where you're supposed to be going. So I think that was perfect. Um, I, I have one more question that just popped up before we get to leaving the restaurant business to being an entrepreneur. Did you have anybody that told you that you can't turn your passion into a business, meaning there's no money in being a cook or no money in like restaurant business is one of the hardest businesses to be. And like, I know, I think a lot of times things that I see that sometimes frustrate me is you can't turn your passions into a business. And, and maybe for some people that's, that's true but I want more people to at least pursue it and see if it's a possibility. So did you have to overcome that? Or did you just always know that you were going to be able to turn it into a business that could support your lifestyle and, and continue to grow? No, I didn't know that I could. And I would say like eat all the way. I would say I, I hit a lot of hurdles, like even just entering the business at all. I hit some hurdles, like, you know, being a young woman in this restaurant industry it wasn't necessarily the easiest thing or the most popular at the time that I entered it. Now, you know, there's tons of women in the industry and we're, we're doing our best to thrive, but it wasn't that easy when, and I'm not terribly old, but it, during the time that I, that I tried it. We're not old. Don't even say that. We are not old. I know we're close enough in age that you cannot use that word. <laughs> but just dating back, like it was a, a lot less likely to walk into a kitchen and see like a crew of women. Uh, or even like if you saw one, you'd be like, oh, she's, you know, in there. So that was tough for me. So I heard a little bit about that, like that, you know, be careful getting into the industry with all this men or, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then 
um, when I had like become a chef or become a cook and then in the industry, I'm like, oh, I want my own place. I want my own place. That was always the end game for me to have like my own shop. And um, I did hear a lot about how hard it is to have your own business, to, to, to be a small business owner, to be an entrepreneur, all of that. Like I heard a lot, a lot of that. Nobody necessarily told me not to do it, but they all, a lot of people told me how hard it was in a way to make me almost feel like, you know, maybe I shouldn't. But when you want to do something bad enough, like those things, you, you don't listen too much. <laughs> I think, I think we get told that for two reasons. One, I think loved ones tell us out of fear of us failing and the fallout from that. They don't want to see us hurt. They don't want to see us like not succeed. So rather than encourage us to pursue something that seems harder or that they couldn't do, they kind of want to guard us against it and protect us against it, which ultimately prevents a lot of people from moving forward. The other reason I think we are told these stories is too many other people are afraid to take on that risk and they don't want you to take on that risk. And it, it might be subconscious. They may not be doing it maliciously, but since they can't pursue and they can't build a life centered around what they view as their purpose or view as their passion, they don't want anybody else to. So they talk about how hard it is and you can't do it. It's not possible. And again, I know that not every person can live their, their passion out, that, that maybe it's not possible, but I do think that we all owe it to ourselves to pursue the thing that can make us the happiest. Like, why does going to work have to feel like going to work? Why can't going to work just be an extension of what we love to do that we can pour everything we have into it, create a great business, create a good life and, and have it all across the board. And it's not easy, which is why not everybody gets to do it. But I also think that's why it's so rewarding is because it is hard work, which takes me to the next part of your story. Um, leaving the restaurant business, I'm sure there was some security there. You know, you, there's a paycheck, you know, you go, you clock in, you clock out to becoming an entrepreneur. What was the tipping point? What made you leave that setting to go out on your own and, and bet on yourself? So a few things It would, I have to start with saying it was the hardest decision that I ever made in my life. Cause like you did mention the security part of it. And um, so I was, I've been in the restaurant business ever since college. So I've been in the under the corporate in the corporate ladder for you know 20 years and um when i de decided to leave i was working with a restaurant group that i had been with for almost 10 years so i had some seniority there i had a very decent you know um salary a bonus set up you know vacation time seniority all those things where like you just feel like you know you shouldn't leave and referencing some of the people that you might have mentioned, like telling you, you know, not to pursue your dream. That's a lot of reason for, you know, the adults in your life or just some other people in your life to, to say, like, maybe you shouldn't because you have a really good job or all those things. So that it was a very, very hard decision. At the same time, it being the easiest decision that I ever made. So um, the day that I made it, it was almost like my body was on fire, you know, telling me to leave my job. And um, I ended up leaving pretty abruptly. I, I didn't necessarily give a ton of notice or any notice at all. And those kind of things didn't, uh, it's not really who I am to just leave a job and not give notice. And, you know, sometimes I feel bad when I talk about it, but I just realized at that moment that if I didn't do it then, that I would never do it. Like I mentioned the bonuses and all that. It was always like these little dangling carrots in front of me um, that made me continue. So, you know what, I'm just, I'm, I know I'm getting paid. I know what this is. I know I have this. I know I have that. And I'm going to stay here all while being completely miserable, watching everything go down the tubes, your, you know, your health and your wellness and how you're feeling and all of that just like dissipate. And it's almost like my, I kind of felt like my passion and my work ethic was being, you know, kind of manipulated a little bit. Um, and it, it just, it didn't really start, it didn't align anymore with, you know, my purpose and my future. So um, it was a very specific day and um, it just kind of all fell into place and I ended up leaving my job. And so I didn't say like, it wasn't like, I'm going to be an entrepreneur now. It was like, you know, well, I'm not going back to work for anybody else. And I'm going to, I need to start, build, I need to build my own business. And it kind of literally just happened yesterday. I had a job tomorrow or like that now hours later, I didn't anymore. So it kind of all fell into that. And then I just got to work. So <laughs> all of those bonuses and um, benefits, it's all there on purpose. It's, it's to keep people boxed in. And I understand why people stay there for the security. Um, and I think there's other people that like you and I, that that is great, but we don't want to, we don't want to miss out on more upside, whether that's 
income upside, growth upside, happiness upside, whatever it might be, those things aren't what I shared in last week's episode when I left the 403B company, what I made my last year and the benefits behind it. And, and like, it's crazy to look back and think I walked away from that for a fifth of what I was making. But to me, it was more than just the money. Like I know that I could build my income back up, but I, I can't create a life that I really want to live and being constrained like that. And again, I put the disclaimer in last week's episode. I'll do it again here. That's not for everybody. And that's okay. Like there's nothing wrong with being comfortable and staying in that groove because we need people to stay in that groove. But we also need people like you, Lauren, to go out and break outside of that box so that you can create opportunities for other people that can't do it themselves, but will be better off working alongside someone like yourself, who's going to give them more opportunity, more, more, more freedom and more flexibility. So I, I think I know the answer to this question. Did you do a lot of preparation? Like, since it sounds like it was just kind of like a an explosion that caused you to go out. Did you do a lot of preparation leading up to it? Or um, I guess another way, to, did you know that that one day that was going to happen? So you were preparing or it really was just, this is it, I'm done. It was really, this is it, I'm done. So when you talk about preparation, as we, you know, we kind of talked about a little bit before, I did realize that a lot of pre preparation was happening for me that I wasn't super aware of. Uh, mm -hmm. But I look back at it now, I'm like, oh, this is why this happened. This is why I met this person. This is why that person was here. This is why this person came with me to work that day. Like everything kind of happened and it was all like, and that's how I knew when I was making that final decision that it was meant to happen. But no, I didn't necessarily prepare. I didn't have a cushion. I didn't have anything except for, you know, some amazing people in my life and a really strong network that I was able to lean on. And that's kind of what happened, but I didn't have a plan. I, like I said, when I was in the restaurant business and or when I was working for that particular company, I did know that I wanted to eventually leave there and open my own shop, the tiny onion. I'll throw that out there into the, to the universe, but yes. I, I wasn't planned in any way where there was like money set aside for it or anything else, except for that's what I wanted to do. So when I left, I needed a bridge between the tiny onion and nothing. <laughs> so that's where Chef Lauren, my brand kind of was born because I just leaned on what I knew I had, which was the ability to cook. Um, and I just started my own personal chef business. And that's kind of where we are almost. We, we may have to have you come back for a regular All About Your Benjamins episode okay. so we can talk more in depth because like you're hitting on so many things I want to go like, I want to talk about the brand of Chef Lauren and how important that is and like go down that avenue, but that's not for today. But I do want to say, I do believe in putting things in the universe, whatever you want to call the universe. So I love that you said the, the tiny onion, right? Yeah, the say that a whole bunch because <laughs> when we put things out there, they there's a funny way that they manifest themselves. So again, it's the the alignment, it's the people you meet, the things that come, and uh, it, there's nothing wrong with putting it out there. I I I love doing that um, to to show the power of that. My wife two years ago wrote down all these goals on a piece of paper, beginning of the year. I've heard stories of this, but I've never experienced firsthand. Wrote down her goals, lost the paper. The next year, she found it, and everything she wrote down came to be true. And some of those were things that she could control. Um, but some of them were things that were goals that were outside, like for her business, a, a sales goal. She exceeded that. Like that's not really within her control. But the thing was, she wrote it down once and she wasn't staring at it every single day. She just put it in the universe, went and worked hard doing something she was passionate about, enjoyed her work. And I'll be damned if every single thing didn't happen. So um, put it out there a bunch, get t-shirts drawn up, get business cards, like yeah. put it out there like it's there and then it'll end up happening. Um, so yeah, there's a lot more that I want to dive into with as time goes on that I'm, I'm learning today in our conversation. But since this is a pursuit episode and these are a little bit shorter um, and focusing on the transition from safety and security, but maybe lack of happiness to lack of safety and security, but more fulfillment, how does what you're doing today better align with your purpose, your passions than what you were doing before? You're still in the, the restaurant business, if you will. You're still a chef. You're still cooking. But how does this freedom, how does this better align with what your purpose is? So if I, I, I for the first time, I feel like I actually have a purpose. Like, I, I, I guess I'm still cooking every day and I'm still doing what I've always done as far as like using my skill set and, you know, producing food for people. But you know, as I sometimes post about, it's more than just cooking now and it's building relationships and, you know, getting to know people and helping people. And I feel like that is 
something that I was truly missing when I was actually just the restaurant chef. Like, yeah, we feed people and they love it and they come back and they thought the meal was good, but you don't get to see the direct impact you have. And now I'm actually in your home or I'm dealing with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis and, and whether it be on the phone or Zoom or cooking for you in your house and I can see the results and I get messages all day and tweets and you know Instagrams about like people eating their veggies or even going for walks or any of that stuff or telling me it's a beautiful day to get better. Some of the things that I say often and you don't realize the impact that you're having on people. And that to me is worth any anything like the paychecks, all of that, the steady, the bonus like that, like seeing that I'm like just being myself is actually helping people to want to better themselves. And that to me is amazing. And, and that's like the, the biggest difference I would say. So here's, here's my prediction that we'll be at the cool thing is we'll be able to look back on this in a couple of years. I think your purpose is greater than just being chef Lauren. It's that food is your, it's your means to an end, like your purpose to talk about getting people to eat healthier and be more active and have a better quality of life. The inspiration that you provide, like, I think that is more of what your purpose is. It's just that your love of food and you being a chef is how you how you deliver that message and make that impact. So I think you'll be doing more bigger and better than just being a chef in the future, especially when you get to go around and like travel and see people like we were talking about. But I think that for you, you have a bigger purpose than just getting people to eat their veggies. That's just the way that you have your impact. So I'll be excited to see if it, it transpires that way. I um, it. My final question, and I'm going to pull it from the regular episodes, but I want to see your answer and we'll, I'll find you a new question when you come back in the future. Um, one question I'm asking all the, the guests that are founders and you're a founder of your business. Who is the first person that bet on you and what did that mean to you? Well, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, the, our mutual friend. And I would say that's Tyrone Ross. Um, I'm sure, you know, if we want to talk about my family and everything like that, you know, uh, they have bet on me in one way or another, but as far as my business is concerned and just as a person, even before that um, Tyrone uh, had, has seen more in me than I, that I even knew existed. And he believed in me more than I believe in myself and having somebody in your corner, um, you know, being around that all the time, it kind of just pushes you to actually become that or, and believe that, you know, to, to kind of believe it too. So um, you mentioned, you know, being FinTwit chef and all that. I didn't even know what FinTwit was, uh, you know, I didn't, mm -hmm. not Twitter, like now, like I've been in the homes of all, you know, a lot of the people on FinTwit, I've cooked for them, I've done Zoom calls and podcasts and all these crazy things. And that's, you know, because of Tyrone and because he believed in me and because he's on FinTwit and he kind of put me out there. And that's how all of you guys know me. So I would say uh, he definitely is the person uh, that bet on me. And that is a big reason why I am where I am today, for sure. Well, I, I'm glad that Tyrone brought you to our attention. Um, and like I said, I think that um, you just, sometimes we just need somebody to help us get us there. And then we take ourselves the rest of the way. Um, and I think that's kind of the path that you, I do think COVID slowed you down a little bit, but you still, I mean, I look to look at what you're able to do within the finance community and carve your niche out within the FinTwit community in a year where you couldn't go see people and do things is tremendous. Like being on podcasts and, and everything. Like, I think it's awesome. Um, and I think that's, a huge vote that should be a huge vote of confidence for yourself that you're doing everything right and that you should be doing. So I'm excited to see where this continues to go. I want to thank you for taking time to uh, record this with me. I am going to have you back and we'll go deeper dive. We'll talk about branding and the importance of that, of helping how that's helped chef Lauren, the business go and how that's going to help the tiny onion come to be for anybody listening that wants to follow you, where can they follow you? And then if anybody wants to hit you up for some online cooking lessons or whatever it might be, where can they find you for that stuff as well? So I am at Chef Lauren Owens on everything. So I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all at the same handle, at Chef Lauren Owens. Um, and then I'm active on all of them as well, too. So they could reach out to me on any of those inboxes or all my information is listed. They can shoot me an email via one of those or, uh, and, or pop onto my website and reach me there. So um, any of that is totally fine. And thank you so right. much. Definitely. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Definitely. And all the, all those links will be on all about and in the show notes and everything. So make it easy to find you, but um, no, I, I, my pleasure to have you on again. I knew the high level of your story and I know we just still just scratched the surface today in just 20 minutes, but um, I'm glad that you came. Hopefully there's somebody listening that can pull inspiration from your story to either start following their passion, continue following it. If they're, if they're doubting themselves to just have an example of somebody who did it themselves and is 
living a better life because of that on all fronts. I think that sometimes can be the motivation to keep somebody going. So I appreciate you sharing your story and everybody tuning in or watching. Thank you for tuning in and watching and uh, we'll keep this pursuit going and we'll see you in the next episode. Awesome. Thanks so much.